There are a lot of ideas that come to mind when you think about a man who is HIV positive. Maybe those are assumptions, some of those based on factual statistics, some of those based on personal experiences, some of those based on fears. In this episode, we're going to explore masculinity and its relationship to HIV. Men, the straight and the gay. It's not just about people going around and, and having a protected sex. It's far more complicated than that, but far more uh, obvious than that as well. If we don't approve those conditions, those other societal flaws, then, then we're just waiting for the next epidemic again. a straight black male with HIV. Do tell. Do tell what that means. <clears throat> um, it means I'm a man, heterosexual man, or I, at one point I was a heterosexual teenager who had unprotected sex. Being HIV positive, do you have to ever deal with the question of, are you gay? Is that like a thing that you have to deal with? Yeah. It's still almost common knowledge that uh, if if you are if you are positive and a black man, then you're either on the down low, or uh, you've just done something. A lot of people now are have a hard time kind of visualizing or understanding how a heterosexual man can become positive uh, through unprotected sex. I mean, it's obviously much rarer a much rarer occurrence than than women. Uh, being acquiring the virus, uh, but it still happens, and it happens, you know, more probably more often than people want to know, uh, because a lot of us, a lot of men, don't talk about it. We don't show up. How do you? Personal question. How do you deal with dating <coughs> and, and disclosure? Um. Um. That's assuming that you're single. I mean, uh, if you yeah, I'm single. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's it's not. Uh, I mean, it's 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 not always easy. I mean, it's it's it it has to happen. I mean, from my perspective, uh, it's it's I can't. If if I feel like I, if I meet someone, that that the possibility of intimacy is you know in the future, if I'm attracted to them, so forth and so on, then I have to disclose at some point uh, before it goes that direction. Oh, before it even goes that direction? Be- because, I mean, I've had, it's not, there's never a perfect time. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the smoothest line to insert into a conversation during happy hour. The sooner the better. 20, almost 30 years of being positive, it's not become much easier. The worst thing about having a first date is having the next first date uh, because you kind of build, you know, you do have that intes- uh, anticipation all over again. And clearly the last first date didn't work out for whatever reason. And that's regardless of status, obviously. Like I've had uh, women ask me, I don't know if, you know, what the complete intent was, but aren't you happy dating other women who are HP positive? Um, and I'm like, I, I, I could be, uh, but one of them, I, you know, I don't necessarily think I'm relegated to just dating someone that's positive. I want to date, you know, someone who, who I feel comfortable with, who I trust, who I, who has all the qualities I look for in a woman, not an HIV positive woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, if the woman I date is HIV positive, then so be it. But it's not going to be because of HIV. Even people living with HIV don't have all this. I mean, that doesn't guarantee compatibility. I made a decision and I moved to San Francisco on Halloween 1995 and it changed my entire life. What what happened in San Francisco? Completely. 
I met the dude who gave me AIDS. I met, I went and I was a gay man for the first time in my life. I wasn't like this straight gay man in New York. When I was in New York being gay in the 70s and 80s, it was never about, I'm gay, yay, you know, it was like, I'm Walt, this is what I do. It was like the first place I ever had public displays of affection with guys. It was the first place I ever had like really like different kinds of boyfriends. And I had some really major relationships when I was there. I had really hot affairs there. I had met a dude who was the antithesis of my last boyfriend that I had been with for 10 years. He had dyed blonde hair. He was a punk. He had plugs back in the mid 90s, which nobody had. Right. Um, he was tattooed, which was then that was another thing that was kind of new. Mm -hmm. He was younger than me. He was a total rebel. Um, he was a prostitute. I knew that, it didn't bother me. But I didn't know he was positive, and we had unsafe sex, and we were high on ecstasy, and I let him um, fuck me, and I'd never let anybody fuck me, ever. And I was, yeah, bareback. And I was like, hi, and it was fun, and, but I knew the minute he did it, I looked at him, and it was like one of those moments when I was like, this girl, I don't mean to get too specific here, but I am not a bottom, okay? <laughs> So for me to be enjoying that, I had to be high, okay? And I looked at him, and he looked like fucking possessed by the devil. And I was like, something bad is happening, but I feel good, and I'm going to ride this out. And he got guilty immediately, because we had had safe sex all the way up until then. I didn't really, I still don't think you can get it from oral sex, and I don't, I'm always open about the fact that I'm positive, but I found that most other guys, when you have sex with them, when they're negative, they'll have um, oral sex with you and they won't freak them out. Hmm. I've only had one person I was involved with who wouldn't have oral sex with me because they were afraid they would make me wear a rubber when they'd suck my dick. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. You just don't get to suck my dick. <laughs> Fear of being a gay man in South Africa? Who? My biggest fear has to be homophobia because I was um, beaten up one time for being gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my wow. biggest fear. What happened to you when they beat you up? Nothing much, but my brother came out and ran to the rescue and they stepped him, but he never, like, he just went to the hospital and came back. What's the story of what happened though? For me being gay. <laughs> were you just like walking down the street? Or? Yes. Did, were these people you knew? Or strangers? Not really, I didn't know them. I knew them by like, I see you walking there. So I don't talk to you. Like I, don't, I didn't talk to them before. And then they just, but you had seen them around before. Yeah. So they maybe just saw you and then they just came at you like that. Like they started swearing and actually beating me up. Oh shit. But it was all right, man. <laughs> you were a soldier, you made it through. <laughs> I can fight my battles. <laughs> you can fight your battles, but you don't want to have to all the time. Uh, yeah, especially when it comes to my sexuality you now. When, when I was still in the closet, mm -hmm. we, I would see gay, gay, gay guy going um, on the street, and I would, my, my friends would like call him names, and I would call him names too. Oh, you would call him names yeah, too? Yeah, that's what I'm trying like, to. That's what I was trying like to. That's why. That's what's common in this um, HIV and gay thing. When did you guys pass the law for legalizing gay marriage? Two thousand and eight, I think. Two thousand eight. Okay, it's so been quite a long it's time. Been a, yeah, it's been a minute. You can have a man who 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 have broken or robbed everybody's house in the community, and everybody know that he do it. He go in and out of the penitentiary, and every time he comes from the pen, the family throw him a barbecue. You know, they embrace him, they celebrate him. You have that same son sitting over there who may be HIV positive or who may just be gay. And he's almost demonized. And so, it's just, that's just the way we see it. The worst thing you can be, I think, and this is just me. It is not based on anything that's science. It's just me, Marsha Kay. I think the worst thing you can be in a black community is the gay. HIV is the most 
political ja. sickness and uh, illness of ever. Ever. For prevention in the gay male community, what are what are the strategies you guys are trying today? On essaye beaucoup de stratégies. On essaye beaucoup de stratégies. Uh, on essaye beaucoup de c'est uh, it's a tough question. C'est c'est quelque chose pour te répondre très très vite et compliqué. La chose que nous aujourd'hui la stratégie majeure c'est incitation au dépistage que les gens connaissent tous leur statut sérologique. Dès lors qu'on connaît le statut sérologique des personnes mises sous traitement de manière à ne pas développer ne pas de, de, de ne pas développer un sida et de, de maîtriser complètement le virus avoir une charge virale indétectable ce qui représente aussi enfin ce qui aide aussi à ce que les gens soient moins contaminants voire plus du tout contaminants avec une charge virale indétectable et donc c'est sur des stratégies qui sont euh, qui profitent aux gens à titre individuel puisqu'on va les mettre sous traitement donc ils vont plus tomber malades donc ils ont une espérance de vie et une amélioration de leur qualité de vie, etc., au, au long cours. Mais aussi, il y a une stratégie, il y a une, un bénéfice qui est collectif, puisque le fait que les séropositifs soient sous traitement les rend beaucoup moins contaminants. Donc voilà, c'est en, en gros, euh, mais c'est euh, toujours l'utilisation du préservatif. Bien évidemment, en première intention, c'est toujours l'utilisation du préservatif, les dépistages et le traitement. Uh, what brought you to this work What, what motivated you to start this work and how long have you been doing it? J'ai été contaminé en 86. Puisqu'on associait, vérit... On associait vraiment le sida avec les gays. Mm. Les, 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 les hommes gays. Mm. Euh, mais comme on, a, comme on a associé le sida avec les, les drogués, les usagers de drogue, c'était le sida, c'est une maladie de PD ou de noir ou de drogués. Et c'était systématiquement... Aujourd'hui, euh, aujourd je ne crois, crois pas. Le VIH ne renforce pas... Euh, ne, ne, non, le VIH n'est pas une raison qui construit ou qui renforce l'homophobie dans le pays. They, they uh, not fear, well, fear and a preconceived notion of what gay is. Like you just see it's pumped in, it's, you know, they're, they're perverts or they're very sexual or it's, it's all this like all negative, negative things are associated with being gay, I guess. It's a lot of people they can see and yeah, here. I am Drew Mitchell and I was diagnosed with HIV um, May 25th of 2010. How old were you when you found out? I was 30. What was going on in your life at that time? I was just breaking up with somebody. Um, a big breakup. It was a big breakup to me, but it shouldn't have been a big breakup. Why? Because we were only together for three months. <laughs> yeah. I know. So three months, but he met. Them. But he had a child. Okay. He had everything that I wanted my partner to have. Having HIV. What does that mean in terms of dating, having sex? What is that, how does that affect that whole vibe? <laughs> It's horrible. It's horrible. I get to the point where I'm like, you know what? I can already see this is going to end well. Why don't I just go ahead and tell him that I'm HIV positive and watch him run away? Because mm. nine times out of ten, that's what happens. Nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten. And when it doesn't happen? And then when the other time it doesn't happen, you're pleasantly surprised. You're like, oh, well, hello. <laughs> you're not even cute, but I'll take you. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that, but I don't know. It's, it's a completely different. It's almost like telling somebody that you're divorced when you have kids. It's like that extra baggage that no one wants to let you know that you have, but right. you kind of have to let them know pretty soon. Right. How is it telling people? Like, do you have like a, a method that you've gone to? Yeah. Like, this is the way that works. This is the way that works for me. It saves it? times for me and for the other person if they're not if they're not okay with it. Which who is for me to judge for another person to say, oh, you're not okay with it? That must mean you're a horrible person. That's not true. When I was not HIV positive, I was still very, very careful. 
So if I was getting involved with somebody who was new and I found that out, I'd probably do the same thing. But for me, third or fourth sentence, hey, by the way, I just need to let you know that I'm HIV positive. I hope you have an open mind about that. Yeah. And so this third or fourth sentence you have to let people know when you know it's headed down that road. Yeah. For me, yeah. I'm kind of impatient. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that shit out the way. How did you learn that that needed to be? Trial and error. Had great conversations with people thinking, oh my gosh, this is going so well. And then got to that point where I'm like, okay, maybe I should go ahead and tell them because this seems like this might go somewhere. Mm. So you almost have to be like, you have to jump the gun a bit in terms of understanding where it's going with people on the regular. On the regular, which doesn't work out very often (laughs) I dream about getting married. I don't really dream about getting kids. You dream about getting married? I dream about getting married. Why don't you dream about having kids? Because kids comes after marriage. I have cousins and nieces and nephews, and I'm all their Uncle Drewby. Uncle Drewby! But I want one of my own that I can spoil and put in my, my ideas and watch them grow, and then maybe one day she'll, she'll take care of me. Or he, um, or he, okay. girl. girls, girl, girls, yeah, 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 I want a girl, I want a baby girl. Girls are so much easier and I can dress them up and I can pay for the wedding and do it like the whole wedding myself. Cause she will not have a say in that. If I am not getting one, she, hers is going to be fucking badass. <laughs>